Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming. Today we're talking about Illumination Bombing and the AJS-37 Viggen in DCS World. What and why? The Lisp B 80 kg is an 80 kg illumination munition that will drop a 3 million candela flare over the battlefield. The Viggen can carry 8 of these on the same racks as the M71 HE bombs. It is primarily for deployment prior to FLIR and night vision capability aircraft, but it still has application in DCS today, and I would even argue in the real world today, as someone who's been on some battlefields. It will illuminate the battle space for follow-on close air support strikes. This B-80 kilogram is an 80 kilogram bomb. It has a 25 kilogram flare. It does use the 125 kilogram Mark 71 pylon, which is important to note if you are loading out and determining weights, two of these bombs will fit per M71 pylon, which is a little different from the M71, which does four. It does have approximately a 170 second flight time, assuming you drop it correctly, and it has a dispense, sorry, a descent speed of five meters per second. As mentioned before, it has a three million candela luminosity. To give you an idea, a 100 watt incandescent light bulb has 1,600 candela. All right, so let's take a brief moment here uh, to kind of talk about why these are relevant, uh, you, you know, today in game in particular, right? So obviously this is going to improve any type of multiplayer mission. Uh, I, the AI doesn't really care if you illuminate the battlefield beyond a trigger, but uh, if you're not using modern generation aircraft that have advanced imaging capabilities. But I would also still like to kind of editorialize and hypothesize here and give you guys a scenario in which even if you're flying an A-10 or the AV-8B or something that does have that advanced capability, uh, the Viking's going to give you kind of some advantages there. So uh, for starters, the ground searching radar for the Viggen is really useful for locating uh, fuel points on the ground or, uh, you know, large concentrations of armor, anything like that, right? So the Viggen can still move out ahead of the strike and locate the target area, um, kind of, and then obviously deploy the flares over it to designate the target. Now. The next part kind of requires some understanding if you're flying any of those other aircraft with advanced imaging capabilities. Uh, if you've done it, odds are you probably figured out that you were flying in a level flight at a altitude and position that allowed you to see easily over the battle space, which means you're also easily visible to surface to air missiles, for example. Um, you're probably not going super fast unless you're really good at acquiring targets with those. Um, you know, so what this is going to really allow you to do in the very beginning is reduce your risk to that air defense artillery threat. Uh, because now you're going to be able to come in low, come in fast, uh, because you're going to be able to make just a regular, you know, visual bombing attack uh, that you would do during daylight. You're not going to need to use those advanced optics and whatnot. Uh, this also enables the use of larger area effect munitions. Again, if we're talking about large concentrations of armor, uh, this will allow you to carry DPICM munitions or uh, just a large number of bombs, rockets, anything like that that's going to help you to cover a large area. Uh, so this is really for those uh, support calls for troops in the open or tanks in the open. Um, and this is really going to also reduce issues where trees and other objects might obscure targets to advanced imaging systems. So uh, additionally, if you're flying period missions, so if you're flying anything in the 1970s or 80s, uh, this is going to be really useful because those advanced imaging options were either incredibly limited or non-existent. All right, deployment options. Uh, the list B can be deployed directly over the target or offset of the target. Your release assumes deployment of all of the flares. Uh, default is a two kilometer offset, but you can set the distance for one, two, or three kilometers. The offset can also be deployed to the left, center, or right of the target. The target is designated as the target waypoint. Uh, that means you can perform radar delivery of the munition and you can fix target waypoint with your radar. Pre-flight, you need to determine your deployment parameters. 
Offset position is determined by the sight mode selector. You can select offsets of left, right, and center on the target. And your offset distance is set in the CK37 computer intact with the address block that belongs to the 23 address block. Sorry, I really butchered that, didn't I? So uh, 23 and one is one kilometer, two is two kilometer. If you put all zeros in it, it'll reset it to default, which is two kilometers, uh, and three is three kilometers. Now, so that it's a little easier to see the dials we were just talking about, your weapon selector is set to attack. I'd like to thank the Odin for uh, making the point in the forums. This is, I think, the biggest area of confusion for anyone who flies a Viggen, right? You're carrying illumination bombs, so you should be in plan, because plan is what you put yourself in for bombing. The Odin said, and I quote, these are not bombs. It's the easiest way to think about this. You're launching flares, right? So you need to be in attack. That's the, the number one thing and a lot of people struggle with that, so right there is probably half your battle. If you're looking at this because you can't get them to deploy, you're in the wrong weapon selection. Attack. All right, again, your sight mode selector. Uh, in the illumination settings, you're going to have Va, Racked, and Ho, as you can see there. Va for left, Racked on center, and Ho for right offset. Uh, your release mode selector is going to be in series, and your target mode selector is irrelevant in this deployment. All right, so let's talk about once you're in flight. So these can be deployed from either nav or ANF in the master mode selector. Your release altitude is going to be 150 meters. Uh, it's just really important that you're at this altitude just prior to the four second mark. Your release speed is gonna be Mach 0.9. The computer assumes you'll be in afterburner zone one. Uh, anyone who's flown a fully loaded Vigna will tell you afterburner zone one, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be struggling to keep that speed. Uh, it's an assumption you're in afterburner zone one. If you're in afterburner zone two or three, that's all right. It'll still work. Uh, the release is based on the throw deployment for bombs on the Viggen. Uh, so it is important to note that uh, the 4G climb that we're gonna mention in a moment is critical for the release of the bombs. So at the pop-up point, you're gonna pull the stick back and pull into that 4G climb we just mentioned. You'll maintain the release through the climb until the falled last light appears. It should be noted that when we talk about a pop-up point, we're not talking about a U-type waypoint that is normally what we refer to as a pop-up point, uh, but rather a HUD-only indication based on the distance line. So let's go ahead and look at that HUD indication. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the HUD symbology during the deployment because this is what's pretty much gonna tell you when and how to deploy them and nothing else will, because you're gonna be flying in the dark. So as you approach your target waypoint, switch into ANF or attack and unsafe your trigger. Ensure your altitude is 150 meters and that your airspeed is Mach 0.9. Again, there's no tried and true kind of argument to when you should do this. Arguably, your uh, you wanna be relatively close, but I wouldn't wait till you're right on top of it. Um, you know, I usually do it probably 15 to 20 clicks out. I don't know. You'll see, <laughs> you'll see where I do it in the, in the, uh, demonstration, I guess, kind of follow suit there. All right. This is probably what you messed up if you got all of your settings correct and you were trying to get them to work. So as you approach your pop-up point, your distance indicator is gonna flash four seconds prior to the pop-up point. Do nothing. This is an indication to you the pop-up point is coming. Four seconds, again, you're traveling just under Mach 1. Distance is clicking by here. It's just a warning. One second prior to the pop-up point, the line will go solid again. There is nothing after this that tells you when to release. So in your head, count one Mississippi or whatever you do to count one second. And then hold down on the weapons release, pull into a 4G climb and hold on for dear life until fault last indicator comes on. Then you may safe the trigger and return to nav, perform evasive action for whatever's coming after you and GTFO. But that's the deployment in a nutshell. Let's go ahead jump in cockpit and see how this looks in game. So again, over here on our settings, 
the big important consideration is that this is not a bomb. So we're going to go ahead and put ourselves into attack. We're going to pay attention to our illumination settings here. And we're going to put ourselves, we're just going to drop it right over the target. All of this information is good. Now over here, let's go ahead, put waypoint 2 in as a target waypoint. Let's see if that actually took, there we go. Come up. Alright, sweet. Waypoint 1. I'm going to keep myself intact over here just to keep these on so I can see if I release them if I'm curious. Alright, over here we're in nav. That's all good. As you can see it's dark outside, so I'm going to go ahead, fast forward this, and we'll pick up the action as we're about to drop. Alright, so we're lining up. We're going to go ahead, roll over into attack and we're now just going to kind of watch. You can see I'm sticking to my altitude hold. I don't really need to change it too much here. It's going to bring us up. All right, there's our four second warning and we're level and there's our release. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we let him go. So I left the airplane lights on so that we could see the aircraft. And there they are. Overshot it a little bit. Not my best deployment. But there you have it. That's what it looks like. Alright guys. Hopefully that really helped out. Um, this was definitely something I struggled with. Uh, I again want to give a special thanks to the Odin from the forums. I'm sure he doesn't know it, but his they're not bombs uh, <laughs> statement really uh, clicked for me and made this all make sense. So uh, as I master the Vigan, hopefully you'll master the Vigan too. The one correction I do need to make is earlier I told you there's not an indication of when to really do your pop-up. Uh, that was wrong. I had forgotten and it was very visible in my demonstration. So as you're approaching, you have the four seconds fl of flashing that's telling you you're approaching it. Uh, when it goes solid, you'll notice that your distance line shoots all the way across. Uh, that is your one second warning. After the one second, it will drop back to the traditional uh, in the envelope inside the distance lines telling you you're within the envelope. Uh, pull up. That's your indicator that you've reached the uh, the release point. So that's when you should pull the trigger and pull into that 4G climb. Uh, let me know down below in the comments, did I miss anything? Anything that you've learned that helps you with these deployments? Um, <laughs> go figure, when I recorded it, I overshot a little bit the, uh, <laughs> the release, but uh, I've had better deployments in my practice runs and trying to figure it out. So I have been able to hit the X. It is very accurate. Uh, let me know down below too, is there something you guys want to see uh, me do a tutorial on for the Vigan? And uh, also, do you like this format better than the other ones? Uh, this is kind of the one I'm going with, the kind of shortened just the action bits with the classroom. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will catch you next time.